Tonight on Q2, coming to the rescue. The kids were out of the house, but I had to go grab the cats, grab the dogs, and that just helped out. Two Southside mobile homes destroyed by a fire that's now under investigation, but two teens are being recognized for their actions. Plus a Medicaid revenue shortfall. Uh, put us into a horrible financial situation. The problem resulting in several cuts at Riverstone Health, but the impact could stretch across Montana and bull riding through barriers. Yeah, it was uh, quite a ride to say the least. A Montana rodeo legend now sharing her story in a documentary. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Monday night. I'm Russ Riesinger. Two families are without homes tonight after a shed fire quickly escalated, destroying two neighboring mobile homes. Well, tonight, police believe these flames erupted after two kids were playing with matches. That fire in the 300 block of South Billings Boulevard caused around $200,000 in damages. But as our David J found out, neighbors are hailing two quick thinking teens as heroes as they quickly jumped into action. One boy came up driving home with his mom. He got out of the car. His brother was across the street. They both ran up onto the porch and inside. Also some neighbors on the other side came by and it was really a neighborhood effort on this rescue. The fire started in the shed and spread to two homes on Sunday at the CNC Community Trailer Park on South Billings Boulevard. I was feeling the, the heat from it all the way over by our dumpsters. I couldn't even be on my front porch. Richard Shavey lives a couple of houses away from where the fire started. He and the neighbors made sure the five people who lived in the homes got out safely. Luckily we just installed that uh, fire hydrant two years ago. So <laughs> the fire department showed up and with it being right next to the fire, it was almost instantaneous that they had it started fighting down. Two others also helped get two dogs and two cats out of one of the homes. I saw that there was this house and I knew the people in there. And I really, like, I don't, I was just, was in shock, and I knew who's in there. 13-year-old Raider Riker and his 15-year-old brother joined the three others on the rescue. The kids were already out. It was just the mom that we, I had to help, we'll just get out. She wasn't getting out, she was trying to grab her stuff. I just told, I had, I told her just go. Raider says he and his brother did not hesitate. Yeah, I'd rather have everybody else safe. I'd rather die saving somebody else. My kids have been taught, you know, that if somebody's in trouble, you help them. Tony Riker drove up with Raider and her other son was already headed to the fire. They're my babies and so I was still scared, you know, for them to go in there. And I was like, and then everybody started screaming for them to come out because we were hearing things pop and things bang. And it was a small trailer park community that became tighter. I'm kind of sad that that happened on Mother's Day and it was a tough, Day for people. I just teared up when I heard about it. Um, mom is proud. Uh, one of the boys now wants to be a firefighter. And she says they are working to help the two families who are now without homes. Billings police say it's believed the fire started by two kids playing with matches, but it is unclear if any charges will be filed. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Tonight we're learning more about Friday's head-on collision in Billings that left one person dead and two others injured. That crash happening on North 27th Street and Mountain View Boulevard right across from MSUB. Police say a 24-year-old woman from Colorado died in the crash. They tell us she was driving at a high rate of speed and lost control, entering oncoming traffic and striking a Chevy Suburban head-on. A 39-year-old man and 37-year-old woman were injured in that vehicle. Police tell the MTN that speed and alcohol are factors in that crash. 29 employees at Riverstone Health will soon be without jobs. The news of those layoffs coming last Friday with the cuts taking effect in mid-June. But it's what's led to those layoffs that's even more concerning. Tonight, our Haley Monaco dives deeper into the potential impact all across the state. With Riverstone Health employees being laid off, the clinic cites a loss of $3 million in Medicaid revenue being one of the main reasons behind the cuts. With Medicaid redetermination, many people lost coverage, and with that, the clinic lost reimbursement. No, everybody's impacted. It was a shock to many when Riverstone announced a 9% workforce cut on Friday. As Medicaid coverage bottoms out, we just simply can afford uh, to maintain our status quo and 
and we've had to make some changes. In April 2023, the Montana Department of Health and Human Services began redetermining who qualified for Medicaid coverage. Over 134,000 people were kicked off Medicaid. We're getting hit the hardest. Before redetermination, 7,000 of Riverstone's 14,000 patients had Medicaid coverage. They've lost nearly 2,000 of those patients. People are losing coverage who might still be eligible to receive Medicaid benefits. Mara Silvers is a Montana Free Press health reporter closely watching the impacts of these changes. Nearly 85,000 people were determined ineligible for coverage because they failed to provide requested information. No coverage means no reimbursement for their providers. We have heard from some other industry representatives that Medicaid redetermination is impacting their bottom line. Industries like long-term care facilities and senior living. We've been um, very, very impacted by the Medicaid redeterminations. In the nursing home at St. John's United in Billings, most of their 100 clients are on Medicaid. And again, most of them were deemed ineligible for coverage during redetermination. The financial conditions and the eligibility of seniors who once qualify, once they qualify for assisted living or nursing home benefits, there isn't a reason for them to not qualify. Nursing homes and health care providers awaiting reimbursement money that goes towards staff and patient care, including Riverstone Health. Everybody impacted by this reduction needs to know that they didn't do anything wrong. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. The Montana Office of Public Instruction says 15 charter schools, including the three in Billings, are ready for launch. The news comes after a Helena judge blocked a requirement that said the schools must receive approval from county commissioners. Superintendent Elsie Arnson came out with the guidance for opening those schools, including approval from commissioners, but a group of public education organizations sued, saying the extra steps could create uncertainty and delay funding. With the judge's decision in place, several of the charters are now on track to open for next school year. The three Billings charters, along with Missoula, Great Falls, Corvallis, and Frenchtown, have already completed their setup, with six more schools set to be done in coming days. Thanks for sharing your pictures with us at weather at KTVQ.com. Bob always comes through for us as you look out towards Dead Man's Basin. Beautiful sunset setting up for us there. Appreciate that, Bob. Uh, keep the pictures coming for us. This one from Kyle, who also gives us a lot of great pictures. He says, cinnamon teal. I will take your word for that, my friend. As you can see, uh, the sunshine there and some of the wildlife starting to come out. Beautiful as well. Bob Gibson, good to hear from you sharing this as we start to see things come to bloom into the bear tooth. And look right there, International Space Station. A little video from Bill Lohman, who said, look how fast that moves across the sky. Pictures, videos, share them with us at weather at KTVQ.com. Forecast coming up. Breaking down barriers. That's exactly what one woman has done in her 25 years of bull riding. She began her rodeo career in the 1970s, eventually becoming a multi-time world champion and a huge advocate for women in the sport. And now her story is going to be told for all to hear in an hour-long documentary. Our Charlie Kleps has details. In the 1970s, it was a rare sight to see a woman competing in bull riding. But that's exactly what Johnny Jonkowski did, winning two world championships and even competing against the men at times. She's still, to this day, considered a Montana legend, but her impact extends far beyond just the rodeo, including here at her nonprofit called Angel Horses Incorporated. I said. In the eventful life of Johnny Jonkowski, there's always been one constant. I mean, I was a girl that just loved horses. That love is why a poster advertising the Red Lodge Rodeo caught her eye nearly 50 years ago. And I thought, well, how bad can this be? A 25-year career later, and she's still known as one of Montana's best, recently being named to the Hall of Fame. All you really ever want it to be is that you got noticed, I guess, for going out there and doing what you love doing. But it was hard for her to not be noticed, many times competing against men and constantly advocating for women just like her. Most of the girls just wanted to ride, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it didn't grow our sport. From Billings, Montana, Johnny Dunkowski. 
By the end of our hour and a half conversation, I said to myself, this woman absolutely warrants her own film. Her storied career and life is now being picked up by Montana PBS, who is looking for the last bit of funding to have the project completed by October. Through the course of making the film, I've learned the depth of her resilience and determination. That determination was tested last June when flooding swept over Billings, swallowing up her nonprofit called Angel Horses. Hundreds of thousands of dollars of damage. There was no recovery. Honestly, there was no recovery. The nonprofit provides free therapy for seniors. And when word spread that it was going under, the community she's helped for nearly 20 years rallied to help her. It all helped. And what it helped is, is made me stronger not to quit. The donations poured in, and Jonkowski was able to make a full recovery, currently geared up to offer the services again this summer. You go through life, I think, hoping that you made a difference, and that was a validation that I made a difference. You know, it's not for me. It's for them. <laughs> Everything about this is for them. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. The Montana Grizzlies have named their next bearer of the legacy number 37 jersey. Cornerback Trevin Gradney was chosen to be the next player to wear the esteemed number within Montana's program. Gradney, a Billings native, was chosen to wear the number by Missoula native Levi Janicaro, who wore it last year. The Billings West grad has steadily risen up Montana's ranks on the defensive side of the ball over the years, being named first team all Big Sky last year. The 37 jersey is passed down among Montana natives who best exemplify the pride, tradition, and hard work within the football program. Still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, breaking down the race. We roll on with our Eastern District candidate profiles, beating Democrat Ming Cabrera, and later. I'm Alina Howder. One appointment here at Dress for Success Billings has changed one Billings woman's life for the better. Find out more coming up. Q from Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Tonight, we continue our look at the candidates vying to represent Montana in the Eastern District Congressional seat. I caught up with Ming Cabrera, one of the Democrats making a run. I've knocked on four to 5,000 doors already uh, just to get that message out. Ming Cabrera has spent a lot of time pounding the pavement. He says it's not only the way he has to do it with a shoestring campaign budget, but also the way he wants to do it. It's the best way to get the message to talk to the people because I can't tell them on a piece of paper. Uh, I can tell them all the things that I focus on, but what they have to do is look at me and see that it's my heart, that I believe that we can bring love back into the community. So you know what I'm about, right? I do, and do I got your vote? In a world of partisan and often bitter politics, Cabrera believes there is still plenty of common ground to be found. We got to ignore the attitude. Okay, we've got to say, you know what, let's talk about affordable housing. Let's talk about the farm bill. Let's talk about Medicare prescription drug programs. These are the things that are affecting Montana right now. What are we going to do with those if we continue to have partisan politics? Cabrera, who's married with two adult children, grew up in Huntley Project, went to medical school in the Philippines, and graduated from Creighton University. He worked in pharmaceutical sales, owned a Chinese restaurant, and also serves on the Heights Water Board. But because I've traveled Montana and eastern Montana for 35 years, I feel like I'm really part of every community out there. A hunter and gun owner, he's also a supporter of the Second Amendment, but wants some checks. We need guns, especially in the rural areas, because a lot of people, they need to protect themselves. But we need to have mental checks on people and make sure that those people that are out there are, are legitimate owners. And we've got to make sure that we continue with the gun safety under education programs out there. As a Catholic, Cabrera says abortion would not be his personal choice, but says he supports a woman's right and saw the consequences of illegal abortions while working as a physician in the Philippines. So who am I to judge who they are and their reasons for doing this? And that's why you'll find Ming Cabrera out knocking on doors, trying to find some common ground and some hard-earned votes. All I can tell you, I'll give you what I have to make sure that we in Montana will always be represented. Tomorrow we will learn more about Democrat candidate John Driscoll. And again, you can watch profiles on all 12 candidates 
under the MTN Politics tab on KTVQ.com. Ed joins us again, and some parts of the Q2 viewing area did see some thunderstorms. That's right. Let's take a look towards Red Lodge. Gene, thanks for sharing this one at weather at KTVQ.com or use your free downloadable app. She said, looking off to the north, that storm moved in, brought some heavy rain, and the small hail was enough that she actually had to go out and shovel it. Really? Away from the front door. We'll come back, take a look at the forecast up next.